Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, please help us to use your word to live by daily. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of James uh, chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. That's James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25, and I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Uh, verse 22 reads, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doings. Our subject for today is practice the word, practice the word. And uh, last week's subject, hopefully you recall, was receive the word. Now, there should be more effort perhaps put into practicing the word uh, because every, say you receive the word on Sunday or on Thursday night Bible study, but you have seven days to practice the word. So more effort should go into practicing the word than receiving the word. Now, receiving the word entails that we put a lot of prayer time in and also practicing uh, uh, receiving God's word in the right way. Now, it's not enough to hear the word. We must do it. And many people have mistaken the uh, the, have the mistaken idea that hearing a good sermon or a Bible lesson is what makes them grow and get God's blessings. It's not the hearing, but the doing that brings the blessing. Too many Christians mark their Bible, but their Bibles never mark them. If you think that you are spiritual because you hear the word, then you're only kidding yourself, deceiving yourself, that lying to yourself. In the previous chapter, James compared the word to seeds. But in this paragraph, uh, he compares it to a mirror. Now, there are two other references to the Bible that refers to God's word as a mirror. And when you put them all together, you discover three distinct ministries of God's word as a mirror. You, you discover his word as an, 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 a tool to examine us, examination, and then restoration, and then transformation. And we'll, this week we'll cover uh, examination, and the next two weeks or so we'll look uh, at uh, restoration and transformation. Now, examination helps us to get a clear picture of what's wrong with us. This is the main purpose for owning a mirror, to be able to see ourselves and to make ourselves look as clean and as neat as possible. As we look into the mirror of God's word, we see ourselves as we really are. James mentioned several mistakes that people make as they look into God's mirror. The first mistake is they merely glance at themselves. They just glance, take a quick glance at themselves. They are not carefully, uh, or rather they do not carefully study themselves as they read the word. And we should be reading the word more to discover what's wrong with us than what's wrong with somebody else. When in reality, what we do is we look for something to, to get somebody else straight when we should be looking to get ourselves straight. God's word will do that. Now, instead of discovering what's wrong with other folks, we must allow God's word to 
or, or his mirror first to show us what's wrong with us. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3 through 5 reads, Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there's a log in your own eye? You hypocrite! First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Now, check your Bible and you'll see that God is calling us hypocrites when we do that. And it wasn't just me. I was just reading it. I'm just a mail carrier. Now, this story is about judging others or rather misjudging others because we look at what's wrong with other people and try to fix them before seeing or attempting to fix ourselves. The truth of the matter is that we are unable to fix ourselves or anybody else. What we see through uh, imperfect eyes is only an imperfect picture. When we're looking through imperfect eyes, we only see an imperfect picture. We see what we want to see. You see us how we're taking selfies these days? And, 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 and it's showing us what we want to see and what we want others to see. But God's perfect word shows us a perfect picture of ourselves and others. And, 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 and his word is without any mixture of error. It's perfect. If we would uh, look through, look at ourselves through God's word, then we can admit our own faults and ask for help to, and discover that uh, nothing can wash our sins away and sin is what m mars us. Nothing can take our sins away or make us whole, make us beautiful. But the word, but the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, many sincere believers read a chapter of the Bible each day. But it's only as a religious exercise. And they fail to profit from it personally. Their conscience would bother them if they did not have their daily reading. When their conscience should bother them because they read the word carelessly. A superficial reading of the Bible will never reveal our deepest needs, nor our deepest faults. It is the difference between a candid photo shot and an x-ray. X-ray will reveal to you what's deep down inside. And if you've got a tumor in, inside of your brain, if you've got a, a, a cancerous spot inside of you on your lungs, you want to know what's down on the inside, not just what the in, outside looks like. Let's move to the second mistake. The second mistake is that they or we forget what they or we see. If they were looking deeply enough into their hearts, what they would see would be unforgettable. We tend to smile at the extremes of people back in the days of the great revival, but perhaps we could use some of that conviction John Wesley wrote about, a, about preaching, a preaching service that he was in, and he said, one before me dropped as dead, and presently a second and a third, and five others sunk down in half an hour, and most of whom were in violent agony. They saw themselves through God's word. Before we condemn these people, to some psychological limbo, remember how saints in the Bible responded to the true knowledge of their own hearts. Isaiah cried out, Woe is me, for I am an undone in Isaiah 6 and 5. 
Peter cried out in Luke 5 and 8, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And Job was the most righteous man on the earth in his day and yet confessed, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. In Job 42 and 6. Let's move on. Uh, the third mistake is they fail to obey what the word tells them to do. They fail to obey what the word tells them to do. They think that hearing is the same as doing, and it is not. Many Christians enjoy substitute, substituting reading for doing, or even talking for doing. We hold endless committee meetings and conferences about topics like evangelism and church growth and think that we have made progress. While there is certainly nothing wrong with conferences and committee meetings, in some cases they are necessary in this world in which we live. But they are sinful if they are substitutes for service. If we are to use God's mirror profitably, then we must gaze into it carefully and with serious intent. No quick glances will do. We must examine our own hearts and lives in the light of God's word. And God's word will light your life up, show you more than you want to see. Uh, now, this requires time and attention and sincere devotion. Let's say that again. This requires time, attention, and sincere devotion. Five minutes of God's, uh, with God each day will never accomplish a deep spiritual examination. I've been fortunate with the doctors that I've had to care for me over the years and I owe a great deal of thanks to God for them. Each of them has uh, possessed two qualities that I have appreciated. They have spent time with me. They didn't hurry in and hurry out. And they have always told me the truth. When Jesus, the great physician, according to Matthews 9 and 12, examines us, he uses his word and he wants to give us his sufficient, he wants us to give him sufficient time to do his job well. Perhaps one reason we glance into the word instead of gaze into the word is that we are afraid of what we might see. After seeing ourselves, we must remember what we are, what God says and what we must do. The blessing comes in doing, not the reading of the word. James 1 and 25 says, this man shall be blessed in his doing. And that's the literal translation. The emphasis in James is on the practice of God's word and we are to continue after reading, the God, reading God's word in the practice of God's word. James 1 and 25, we just read. Uh, also Acts chapter one, verse 14, chapter two, verse 42 and verse 46. Chap Acts chapter 13, verse 43, chapter 14, verse 22. Chapter 26 and verse 22. All are examples of the attitude of the early church towards God's word. And at one verse that I love says, and, I, and it might be uh, chapter 26, verse 42 or 14 and 22 says, and they continued daily in the word of the Lord. I think it's uh, 242 or 46. Now, why does James call the word of God the perfect law of liberty? Maybe and most likely it's because when we obey it, God sets us free. Psalms 119 verse 43 says, 
and I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. John chapter 8 verse 34 says, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And then John chapter 8 verse 31 and 32 says, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And we were set free from the penalty of sin a long time ago on a Friday on a hill called Calvary. Jesus Christ died. He hung, bled, and he died to pay the bill that none of us could afford to pay for ourselves. He paid the price for our sins, the sins of the whole world. Jesus died for the sins of the world. And by faith, we receive that wonderful gift of pardon. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. But God, when you hear but God in the scripture or to do with our situations, and then when we allow God to take over, he changes it. He changes our lives. He changes our situations. But God raised up his son back to life, never to die again. And through Jesus Christ, we can expect eternal life after we have laid this old decaying body down, never to die again. That's it for this week. But now, Examination is not the only ministry of God's word as a mirror. Uh, that's just the first one. You got to come back next week and the week after to get uh, the next two installments of God, the ministry of God's word as a mirror. Uh, so I pray that God's word has blessed you and you will allow it to move you from being a hearer only to a doer, that you will become one that practices on a daily basis the word of God in your daily living. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your transforming works brought to us by the Holy Spirit through your word that makes us not only receivers, but doers of your word. We pray that you will cause your word to come alive in us. And it is in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this week. This, uh, whenever you're viewing this video, good thing about uh, YouTube is if you don't get it on Sunday, then come back Sunday night and it'll be there. Or Monday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And if you want to listen to it every day or view it every day, it's there. Take care. And I hope that God's word will help you as much as it helps me in life. And that it will become a joy to feast on his word so that you can do uh, better in life. Uh, God's word will help you to do better. Again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.